Uh, hello, I'm Lawrence from Project Heaven. Uh, in today's video, we're going to update you on the progress uh, for this Peugeot 205 T16 Rally replica. Now, you may have seen in our last videos, uh, we did a, a video on engine building for this particular uh, project, and we also talked a little bit about supercharging. Two separate videos you may have seen. Uh, well, today I'm going to talk through what we've done since then. Uh, and then we can catch up again at the end of the day and see what progress we've made through today. So you can see now the engine is, is back in the car, it's back in its home. Uh, there's been um, not too much work done before we put it in the car. It was, it was very nearly ready to go in. But since it's been in the car, uh, Ed, our master fabricator, has been working on uh, lots of things here, including the inlet manifold, um, making this um, inlet uh, throat for the uh, manifold. He's made a reducer here to go between the throttle body and the supercharger, brackets here to hold the intercooler. Uh, we're going to be finishing up a lot of that work today, uh, welding it all up, painting it, and hopefully by the end of today you'll see a far more assembled car. Uh, so something we've done is swap to the, the Clio 182 manifold. It's a much more compact aluminium uh, manifold. Uh, and because we're going to see quite a lot of boost in this, we've uh, plugged up a lot of the holes with uh, proper welded joints. Uh, and make preparations for all that boost to stop sensors from popping out. We can uh, show you some of those. Uh, we've got barbs here attached uh, so we can take vacuum lines off and measure the pressure um, for a gauge for the ECU. Uh, and there was a third thing oh, for the uh, fuel pressure regulator as well. Uh, Ed's mounted, he's made a mount on the side here for the throttle blipper, which um, opens the throttle momentarily. Uh, between gear changes. Uh, it's a sequential gearbox, you see, so um, that helps uh, shifting uh, downwards when the engine revs need to rise. Um, you can see here the throttle body, which will go on shortly. We've made engine mounts, sorry, supercharger mounts here, which have uh, come off of the engine mounts. So the supercharger is on top of the engine, rather an unusual place uh, for any other front engine car because there's been no room to go higher. But of course, in this arrangement, there's plenty of room up here. Uh, it keeps it nice and compact. We'll also be doing the boost piping. So uh, when the supercharger has raised the pressure of that air, the piping needs to route to the intercooler, which will mount here, and I'm sure you'll see it later, and then go back into the manifold here. So uh, Ed's been working on the piping for that. Uh, and today I will be on the wiring. You can see a lot of exposed wires here. Uh, so because of the supercharger, we've had to change a number of sensors, uh, including the manifold absolute pressure sensor, um, and the throttle body itself has two. There's a throttle position sensor which needs a new terminal uh, because this is new and a idle control valve which we need terminals for as well. So as you can see the exposed wiring here I'm changing a few of those uh, terminals, those ends, so that they connect to the new components and also I've changed the routing of the wiring. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of the video and we'll catch up later to see uh, what progress we've made today. Join us again uh, late on Friday night. We've had a, a good day's work. We didn't quite get around to painting this, but as you can see, uh, there's been a, a great deal of progress. Our master fabricator Ed has been uh, making these loose pipes with lots of um, straight and uh, sort of curved sections. He's piecing them together to make a lovely uh, arrangement here. We've got the intercooler mounted. Uh, there's a tray here, an aluminum tray, which is going to scoop the air in from above. Uh, it might be difficult to see on camera, but uh, this uh, roof section, which is upside down, has a slightly raised section, so you can imagine the roof here is uh, slightly raised, so there's an intake for the air to go through the intercooler and cool that to uh, boosted air as it goes into the engine. Uh, Ed's also created another um, spindle here, 
for the flipper, which is the, uh, the device which raises the revs while you're dancing. So that's all been mounted up and it's attached. The throttle body is now mounted. Um, the wiring, I've done the wiring here as well, so the new uh, connector for the throttle body. Uh, shortened some of the wiring here and uh, mounted it all so it's not going to rub on anything else and the, the, the wires are just the right length. There's still a little to do, I didn't get it all done. Uh, these gear, these wires extend to the rear of the gearbox uh, with a few more connectors and uh, things to do and we've got to reroute the wiring and make sure it's um, in a conduit so it's well protected. Uh, you will have seen on the video just moments ago, Ed, Ed has done the welding here now and attached all, this, all these brackets uh, so this can be mounted. It does need to come off again unfortunately to paint it up. There's a lot of um, it, a lot of what you've got to do around uh, reducing uh, noise in the signals for the ECU uh, and one of those things we, we've brought all the earths to one point um, which wasn't the case before uh, so that should help a lot with the signal noise um, so yeah Hugo's just finishing up that work um, and we started a little bit of work to mount a uh, oil cooler uh, there's a duct here which brings air in towards the wheel we're going to mount an oil cooler down in here uh, which is the oil cooler for the supercharger has its own uh, independent oil system. The supercharger has a little oil pump within it uh, which sends the oil from this connector on this side down to the oil cooler and back to a reservoir or it might be the other way around I have to look and then back to the supercharger here so that's got its own constant supply of oil which is being cool as well. So uh, work still left to do then. Uh, a lot of components still to go back on. Uh, an air filter here will complete that uh, inlet track um, there's a lot of components missing here. There's a, there's a rear bumper structure which holds the rear clamshell in place. Um, as I said, a lot of wiring to go on here. It needs new CV joints on the inner here, new CV boots on the outers. Um, uh, there's an oil system to go in as well, so a, it's a, a dry sump engine, so there's an oil tank to go in here and associated plumbing to root in there. And uh, also the, uh, the coolant plumbing as well has to go in. There's then a little bit of work to do to tell the ECU about the new sensors. It used to have a, a one bar a manifold absolute pressure sensor, now it has a three bar sensor. Um, but we're only expecting to see 1.2 bar above atmospheric, but uh, a lot of the work that's been done here would allow us to go a little further if the customer so wishes. So we put a three bar sensor in, and the new throttle position sensor will be calibrating. Um, then it's, yeah, there's then a lot of rolling road work to do, sorry, because uh, the arrangement of the pulleys on the front means the crank position sensor will be, uh, will be out of phase, so that needs calibrating as well. But then, yeah, it's, it's really from scratch, it needs mapping on the rolling road again, because all the parameters are very, are very different now to how they work, uh, which will be quite an exciting uh, bit of work to do. Quite noisy and smoky, but um, quite an exciting bit of work to do. Thanks for watching today's video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see further updates on this project. I hope you enjoyed the video today.